this video is about how aliens like to put special little effects in my experiences. They put special effects in all of my experiences, but I just decided to name this video special effects or whatever. But yeah, they always they always be doing their special effects in my lucid dreams and virtual reality experiences and out of body experiences and dream dreams. Okay, so anyway, um, this first long drawn out lucid dream was about a couple weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago, maybe by now, about three weeks ago, and um, they created this long drawn out scenario where I was walking around Home Depot, but it was a uh, Home Depot in a strange town, and it was a, a Home Depot I've never been in before, and um, and my mom and sister, they, they were in the experience as well. And um, so anyway, I'm not going to go into all the details, but man, when they create these lucid dreams for me, I mean, it's just like living in a whole nother reality where I'm just doing my thing, just doing normal day-to-day -day boring things. But a lot of these lucid dreams, they feel like they're many, many, many hours long. They're probably not, but they feel like that. Okay, so anyway, the aliens haven't done this in a while, but they have done it before. Where they put something very scary, like I'll be walking around, like in this particular case, you know, Home Depot. I was either at Lowe's or Home Depot. And, um, so, um, I was just walking around, walking around. I remember my sister and mom saying that they needed to go look at some stuff. So then I got separated from them. And I started walking around by myself. And I ended up in a big area. Um, it was just like, exactly like Home Depot. And just, you know, a big area of the store where, um, so I, I don't know what the hell they were doing. But um, th this is the, uh, the scary work zone part that I'm talking about. Lots of times they'll put me in scary like situations and um, but like I say they they haven't done it in a while except for you know I mean I can't remember the last time they did it before three weeks ago but this lucid dream was like three weeks ago and so I was walking around you know safe parts of Home Depot you know totally safe parts and then I ended up going into to a, an area where it was kind of like I really wasn't supposed to be in that area. It was kind of like marked off from the public, apparently. Um, it was kind of zoned, uh, you know, not for regular people to be walking around in this particular area. These workers were like, well, I don't know what the hell they were doing. But I remember smelling some, um, I was walking around this big square, you know, this big square area of Home Depot. It was just like Home Depot. I mean, it had things stacked, you know, really high all the way up to the ceiling almost. Or the, yeah, the ceiling almost. It had really, really high ceilings and stuff stacked. And this whole square area was like, it was kind of like, I don't think I was supposed to be in there. It was just for the workers. Um, and um, so anyway, I found myself in this kind of scary-ass area where I um, saw some fire, there was like some fire, some things burning, but I don't know what it was exactly that was burning. So I saw some fire and then I smelled some like, it wasn't real sm strong though, they didn't make me smell it like real strong, but I smelled like gasoline, like petroleum kind of smell. And I remember thinking, shit, I'm not supposed to be in this area. So then um, I finally got out of the area Oh, actually, I do remember they did do something kind of scary like this not too long ago in one of those, uh, yeah, they did in one of those videos uh, when I talked about four or five lucid dreams they gave me. Yeah, they did something kind of scary where my car was about to blow up. Yeah, so I forgot they did do that a few months ago. But anyway, but this is a different situation. They've done stuff like this before where it didn't have anything to do with like just being in a vehicle where it's like I'm walking around and then I end up in this real scary environment that I'm not supposed to be in. They haven't done that in a while. 
except for three weeks ago, and they put me in this hazard, like I, like I was walking around this hazardous area of Lo or Home Depot. I wasn't really supposed to be in that area. It was like a work zone or something, but I'm not sure what the hell the employees were doing. But it was just this squared off, this square, big old square part of the area of Home Depot. And like I say, I don't, it was like a work zone. I don't think I, it was inside the building. It wasn't outside. It was inside the building and I wasn't really supposed to be walking around in it. So I finally started walking um, out of the area. And here comes the funny part. Here comes the funny turtle, my pet turtles. They're actually my two pet turtles. Because see, currently I have, uh, I have Dewey in the house and Luna. And um, last year I had different turtles in the house, but so the aliens knew that. They knew I currently had Luna in the house and Dewey in the house. So, you know, I'm interacting with them more because the other turtles are hibernating. So then after I got out of the scary ass work zone area that I knew that I was kind of scared because I knew I wasn't supposed to, I felt like it was real dangerous to be walking around there. I walked over way, way at the other part, past where you return stuff. That was another part of the scenario. That was a special effect or anything, special effects or whatever. But here comes the special effects part. part. So I started walking way over, like way past um, the area of the danger area and way past the area where you uh, return items. And um, then I started walking towards the other end my sister and mom already, my sister, yeah, and mom already got separated from me. And I walked towards the other end of the other wall, the other end of the building. And it was like, it was like I brought my pet turtles, Luna and Dewey. It's like I brought them there to play while me and my mom and sister went walking around and sh shopping. And um, so anyway, it was so funny. Dewey and Luna... I think Dewey was the one that like talked out first. Dewey started talking. It was like, yeah, 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 yeah. Like was looking out the window. There was actually a window right there. It was sunny. There's a window of Home Depot. And um, Dewey started talking to Luna like, ah, like, let's look out the window and play. Cause like they were all joyful and wanted to play and stuff like outside. But they were, it's like they were in a little child area, like a little uh, you know, like if you go to the YMCA, sometimes you can bring your kids and make them play in a little play area. Well, this was kind of like I brought Dewey and Luna to this little play area of, of Home Depot. And they started talking. It was so cool. Luna and Dewey started talking like all joyfully, like they like, la, 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 like I want to go outside and play in the sun. It's so cool. But that's the special effects part. But yeah, these beans, they have such a funny sense of humor. And actually, they just gave me this other long, drawn-out, lucid dream this morning. But I'm not going to talk about that. But a few days ago, they gave me this other long, drawn-out... This, Yeah, this was just a couple days ago. Long, drawn-out, lucid dream. And um, I looked up at the... Uh, it's like I was in like a big, huge... Uh, Chinese restaurant, but anyway, it was it was very uh, detailed. I'm not going to talk about. It would take too long to talk about. But I, I looked up at the ceiling, and Luna was up there just like playing around on the on the. Uh, there were what do you call them? Like rap rap. I don't know what you call them. Uh, there were like low lying, uh, you know, from the ceiling. I forgot what you call them, rafts or whatever. Like, I don't know, pipes or whatever. I don't know what the hell you call them. And she was like sitting there like playing. Now, like I say, this lucid dream, it was really, really, really involved. And, um, but it would take too long uh, to talk about. It was just really, really long. I was about to like have a date with this man. And I finally figured out who this man was. He was a cross between this one guy I know who's like a host of a show and another guy that would come into Barnes and Nobles quite frequently. But yeah, it was a cross between that guy and I was supposed to like have a date with them. And anyway, it was just a very long drawn out lucid dream. But anyway, 
one part of the dream, but I can't remember where the hell I was at this point. I think I was in, I don't know, I was either in my apartment or it was this Chinese restaurant. But I looked up and Luna was just dangling there, just playing around on the rafts, uh, the pipes or whatever coming down from the ceiling. And um, I wasn't even scared that she would fall or anything. It was just normal for her to be up there playing around like a bird or something. It was so funny. And I don't know, these beans, they have a sense of humor. But, yeah, and they're always putting turtles now in my scenario. But, um, yeah, this morning I had another freaking long, drawn-out, lucid dream. It was fun. Uh, but this time it didn't. There's no turtles in my scenario. But <laughs> there actually was cherry pie and crust because they know I love they know I don't like the pie part they know I only like crust so I was eating this crust I was actually at my step grandma's house and she was still alive she died 20 years ago but in this lucid dream she was still alive she was my step grandma I don't know why they didn't put my other grandma in my scenario not yet anyway but yeah so Anyway, but it was a long, another long, drawn-out, lucid dream they gave me this morning about my step-grandma. And, um, so anyway, so that was about the turtles and, like I say, s the special effects and stuff. How they, they can put smells. They make me smell things. They make me taste things. Like I say, I could clearly taste the awesome gummy crust of the cherry pie that I ate this morning in my lucid dream. And I could smell the gasoline when they put that danger zone in Lowe's or Home Depot or whatever. I could smell that yucky gasoline petroleum smell. Okay, and here's another. Like I say, they put special effects in all my scenarios. I just decided to just make one separate video and call it special effects. And um, uh, like I say, the reptilians mostly give me all these uh, lucid dreams, but sometimes... It's it's a little bit of both working together, some of the greys and reptilians. And um, at least that, that that's my perception. I can pretty much tell which ones where it's just a reptilian doing it or which experiences where it's a little bit of both. I can pretty much tell by what they put in my scenario. But, but yeah, one time, um, shit, I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, yeah, a lot of things that they do, too. And there's this one guy on YouTube that also kind of talks about that. I forgot his name, but yeah. Uh, and I believe the grays could be responsible for those kind of lucid dreams and virtual reality experiences. But they haven't given me one um, in a while, but they do a lot. They'll put this little creature, like it, it might look kind of human. But I mean, the creature will be like, I mean, no bigger than four or five inches tall. And it'll be like kind of like half animal or half cat, half human, or it'll, yeah, it'll be like this little creature. And sometimes, like I say, uh, to remember what it looked like and everything, I have to immediately write it down sometimes because too much time goes by, you forget. But they'll put this like little, it'll be like a little human creature or semi-human or semi-animal or like a bird or something, but it's like five inches tall and it's, but it's like human because it talks and everything. And they'll make me, like, bond with it. They'll, like, like I'll be really close with it, like it's my child or something. The aliens like to do that a lot. Uh, put little creatures like that, and I'll feel, like, so bonded with the little animal or human, whatever the hell it is. They do that a lot. But it's been, it's been a few months since, they, since they've given me one of those experiences. But I think the greys a lot like to give me those types of scenarios. But anyway, okay, so this other special effect, well, like I say, uh, they're always, all of these experiences are special effects. But, um, but anyway, the, the lucid dream that I had, uh, when was it? Yesterday, where I was about to date this man, and, this, and he knew I didn't really like him, and, but I still wanted to go out with him, and it's like, it was just this long, drawn-out, like, where is he? When is he going to meet up with me? And it's like he would never show up. And and then I ended up walking around the Chinese, huge Chinese restaurant. It was dark. It was dim. And it was kind of deserted. And I kept walking around like, like where the hell is he? Because I was, you know, we were supposed to meet there. 
that had a dinner date. It was just really weird. Like, and it totally feels like and they give me some of these, uh, these experiences. I mean, it's totally like I'm in another reality, another dimension. It's so cool. Uh, but that one wasn't necessarily one of my more funner ones, but still it was fun. Uh, and I remember like walking off pissed off because uh, the Chinese man was like, you're supposed to have reservations and you didn't have reservations. And I remember walking off past the kitchen. And I remember throwing some shit down. Like, I don't know, I threw some food or something off of the tables or something. But anyway, um, yeah, these experiences are really fun. But anyway, okay, so the big vagina one, that was just an experience. Uh, well, it wasn't really a, an experience, but a few. This was like a couple weeks ago when I was talking to Joel. And Joel, he always does very, very perverted things. And he's the one that I'm always like asking, you want to come give me some sex? Because he's funny. He's such a pervert. And he likes he likes doing sexual things. So I was like, Joel, do you want to come give me some sex? And that was like in the morning time. This was about three weeks ago. And so this is how he answered me. He put, I put a pecan there for a vagina because I think pecans look like vaginas. But anyway, so this is how he answered me. Um, except he didn't bring me into the, he didn't pull my astral body into the experience. They can, um, when you're just kind of like getting groggy, they can just, bam, put this whole virtual reality scene right in front of you, right in, in front of your consciousness with your eyes closed. They do that a lot. And this is what he did. I was like, Joel, do you want to come give me some sex? And this, this is how he answers me. A lot of times he'll answer me like this. So he put, I had my eyes closed, of course. I was kind of in that groggy state. He put this big old vagina and that's all it was was just a big old vagina except he made it kind of like longer and bigger and he put it on a bed it seemed like it was about like a queen bed it was a pretty big bed and it was up against the wall and he put this big vagina it was kind of like floating uh, you know just floating there above the bed like two or three feet and um, he was presenting this big old vagina at me And he was making like the lips, like the left part of the lips and the right part. He was making them just kind of like open up, like kind of open, 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 open. And um, it was just funny as hell. Except like I say, he, uh, they can uh, magnify things. Like he magnified it, you know, made it a lot bigger. Totally 100% realistic. Except he made it bigger. You know, he amplified it and made it bigger when he shoved this experience at me, this live experience in my consciousness. Now, that's a little bit different compared to when they just sort of pull, you know, when they take your astral body out and then they just throw you into this virtual reality scenario. These scenario scenarios are a little different, you know, when they just kind of shove it in your consciousness, this whole virtual reality scene, they just kind of shove it in your consciousness as opposed to just pulling you into the scenario. So yeah, um, but that's how they answer me, or that's how he answers me. It's hilarious. And that's all I said. I was like, Joel, do you want to come give me some sex? You should try it sometime. They'll answer you in many, many different ways. But they'll put all sorts of things, not just vaginas. They'll put penises and everything else. But yeah, except he was making it open up, like the vagina, the lips kind of 